This is Edinburgh, home of the Enlightenment, the Athens of the North, a city built on seven hills, just like Rome, kind of. Welcome to Scotland Unplugged and the story of those seven hills. Let's start with the big dog. This is Arthur's Seat, part of an ancient volcano sitting on top of Salisbury Crags and stretching 251 metres into the sky in the middle of a city. Robert Louis Stevenson described it as a hill for magnitude, a mountain in virtue of its bold design. It's definitely not subtle, but why is it called Arthur's Seat? There are a few possible explanations. One version is that it could have a connection to King Arthur. I know what you're thinking. He was English. Well, this place has changed hands a bit over the years, and Arthur might have been Welsh or Brythonic, or never existed. But it has been speculated it could be the site of Camelot. There are the remains of a hill fort around the summit. They only started excavating in 2020, and then Covid got in the way, so there's still stuff to discover. It's pretty massive though, covering around 20 acres, about the size of a decent field. It's thought to have been built by the Votadini, a tribe of Brythonic Celts who lived in the area at least as far back as 1500 BC. It has also been speculated that it could be linked to a mythical giant called Arthur, or a corruption of the Gallic Ardna Sed, implying the height of arrows, or a corruption of something else in Gallic. Basically, no one knows. Legend has it that King David I was out hunting here one day and came across a stag at the foot of the hill. He thought he was about to be gored to death, but a cross appeared between the stag's antlers and it turned and left. The king is said to have founded Holyrood Abbey on the spot. This is St Anthony's Chapel. I like using it as a backdrop for videos, especially on windy days, but I don't know much about it. And it turns out, neither does anyone else. We know the last chaplain left in 1581, and we know some boys playing in the area in 1883 tripped over some bones that turned out to be very old. It was linked to Holyrood Abbey, which is just over there, by a path. One theory has it that it was built as a beacon to pilgrims as they sailed up the Forth. It might also have been a place to keep those pilgrims out of the way of the abbey where the real hardcore monking went on. My favourite story about Arthur's seat though is the one about the mysterious coffin dolls, 11 tiny sculptures in coffins found in a cave by some boys in 1836. No one knows who made them or what they meant. It is a great place to come if you want to put things in perspective or if you want to feel like you own the whole world. A wee bit further on and we get to Blackford Hill it's a bit of a beast to climb as well, with these punishing steps that lead up to the police radio mast and a meteorological station on the 164 metre peak. There's the Royal Observatory on the top and a view over the Hermitage of Braid, part of an estate below that was given to the city as a public park in 1938. Watch out for the dodgy cliffs though. There's a hill fort on top of this one too. Unlike these, the Braid Hills, they are a bit like Blackford Hill in that they're not volcanic plugs or made up of volcanic ash. They're 213 metres tall at the highest point. Once again, there is a big, huge, massive aerial on the top. There are also the remains of a World War II anti-aircraft battery somewhere over there in Liberton. But here's where we start to see a bit of a problem. The Braid Hills. There are loads of them. This is the Easter Craig Lockhart Hill, and that is the Wester Craig Lockhart Hill. I mean, maths was never my strong point, but these are made up of volcanic ash that cooled into hexagonal columns. The gap in between them is Glen Lockhart, and it formed around 17,000 years ago, when an ice sheet covered everything in this area. The melting water cut a channel. Like Blackford Hill, the Braid Hills and Arthur's Seat, these are part of a nature reserve. And so is this, Gerstorfen Hill. I used to run here every Sunday, and if I was lucky, I might get a view of a zebra through the fence of Edinburgh Zoo. The hill was formed by east to west glaciers. 
there's a disused nuclear bunker on the other side that should be opening as a museum soon. A walled garden and this, Kerstorfen Hill Tower, built in 1871 as a monument to Sir Walter Scott, like he needed another one. And if you're here on Doors Open Day this weekend, you can get in and climb to the top. This hill is a pretty big part of the skyline, depending on where you are. And it looks especially cool at night, with all the radio masts and lights. Makes me think I'm in a proper city, which is important when you're a country bumpkin. Behind me is the Castle Rock. It's kind of famous for having a castle on top of it. There are tunnels underneath, and legend has it that a piper was sent in to see where they went, playing as he went, so they could hear him and he wouldn't get lost. Obviously, he got lost. And now, sometimes, you can hear the pipes playing from the cavernous depths. Or it could just be a tartan shop on Princess Street. The castle has obviously seen a bit of history, way too much to list here, but there's been a fort here probably since the Iron Age. It was obviously a major strategic stronghold, given its position and commanding view, and it changed hands a few times. They still fire a gun there every day at one o'clock. Historically, that was to let the city's timekeepers set their watches. But these days, it's just to scare the bejesus out of tourists. I said that Arthur's seat was part of the volcano, and so is this. And this, Colton Hill. It's my favourite. It has a cannon aimed directly at Princess Street that my kids love to clamber on, and a bodged, abandoned model of the Parthenon known as Edinburgh's Disgrace. It was supposed to back up Edinburgh's claim as being the Athens of the North and turn the top of this hill into the Athenian Acropolis, but they ran out of money, hence the disgrace. Really, it's a bit like the claim that Edinburgh was built on seven hills, just like Rome. If we're honest, it was built around one hill, the Castle Rock, and then expanded. And as you'll have guessed, if you kept on counting, there are more than seven. There are actually 10 hills above 30 meters. So why is this one my favorite? I love the element of folly in the fake Parthenon. There's an observatory and a funky restaurant that juts out into the sky, and a cool walkway giving views of the city. And this, the Nelson Monument, a monument to Admiral Lord Nelson. It had a function as well though. I mentioned the gun that goes off in the castle at one o'clock. Historically, when the gun went off, a ball dropped on top of that tower. That meant it could be seen from the sea, keeping the sailors right too. But that's not why I like it so much. It's also the place I proposed to my wife. I might have mentioned it before, but I don't really like heights. That is pretty high. As well as having a view, it gave me the perfect excuse to drop to one knee without arousing too much suspicion.